In this video, we're going to discuss our meeting with Robin Shute, who is the current king of the mountain, so the Pikes Peak Hill Climb, the famous hill climb race in America. He won it multiple times, and we got to visit him at his shop at Mount June, close to LA, and he even assembled the car for us so we could have a great look up close at all of the bodywork elements, like the wing, the splitter, and so on, to see how it all works, and to see which modifications he made to his car based on airshaper simulation results to make it go faster and not just win Pikes Peak, but also to grab the records at different circuits like Willow Springs and so on. Hey Robin, good, good to meet you. Absolute pleasure having you here, thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me over. This is it, this, this is the real car. This, is, this the is the one that broke all the records. That's it, well we got one record at the time at the yeah, moment. We yeah. just uh, broke the record at Streets of Willows. Yes. Uh, two weekends ago with Grid Life. Yes. Uh, the official lap record before that was a 1 minute 11, we were able to go under a minute and do 15 minutes yeah. so it's a significant difference on that one. To walk us through, mm -hmm. this car was actually set up for bike speed, which is a whole different setup because it's high up, it's different density, uh, different layout of the track. How did you go from that setup to the one you're using now? It's a really good question. Uh, step one, I reached out to Superfast Matt, yeah. uh, who's filming right, 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 right now, who is, has been using this tool called Airshaper. Um, yeah. You'll be very familiar with that tool yeah. because that is your company and your business. Um, because I wanted to do an aero kit for this you know, higher, higher air density and also higher average speed yeah. racetracks that we get on circuit compared to Pikes Peak. Um, if you normalize air density and speed, Pikes Peak is the equivalent of you know, racing around an average of 65 miles. Very yeah. slow aerodynamically. Yes. So, um, you massive surfaces, that's so massive big wings. surfaces, yeah. big wings. So, what we had on the front, we had this third element sat here yes. um, on both sides, and then the rear we had a biplane wing. It's actually yes. there. Now, we had a very long interlace, which was going from the way down to the bottom here. Yeah. And then we also had this second biplane element sitting at the um, at the height just above the rear engine back there. Step one was figuring out what the front end did and that was happy. And then step two then was optimizing this rear end wing package. Um, Which you did separately, right? You, you ran analysis yeah. on the full car, but then just to really grasp what's happening with the rear wing, you did isolated simulations just on the wing. Exactly, just on the wing. You learned a lot about the wing, but also learned a lot that the rear wing yes. interaction with the car is just so, yes. so huge that you can't really discount all other. Yeah. We found we tried out some dive planes on the side and in isolation it worked really well yes. and, and on the car just did not perform it made it work. So that was fascinating to see. Um, but we were able to well I was able to come up with an end plate design that was you know still reasonably large, still yes. really engaged the rear wing um, but added some efficiency and then the other thing we, we added to the rear were these gurney flaps on the back and these replaced what we were using that big yeah, bike like the element, which, so. which also helps to activate the diffuser a bit more. Exactly. Right? And it's been great. It's been fantastic. It was exactly, we drove the car on the track, it was stable, the balance was exactly as I expected, and we went from there. So, really reassuring to know that we can use a tool like Airship yeah, yeah. and go and um, go and put these changes on the car and they work out and they yeah. give us the, the speed difference. I mean, when we Session on session, from when we went from Pikes Peak Aero to this Aero, we were about 15 mile an hour faster on the straights. Oh, yeah. So to give you an indication, we were kind of maxed out at 147 mile an hour yeah. with the Pikes Peak Aero kit, and we went to this one, and we were up at 162, 163. So that's, that's awesome. a significant change. Yeah. What else do you have in store, if you can mention this? Tweaks yep. and updates Tweaks. you want to do? So at the moment we have... Uh, in the process of cutting up old wolf parts. Yes. This, this was a, the back side of the front wheel pods. And it looked a lot like a barge board to me when it was in this box. I've already cut it out. This is the biggest barge board that I could make yeah. out of it. And yeah. I ran that in simulation. And it didn't do as well as if it was a little bit smaller. So I then optimized the shape. Um, and then this is now the new trim line. Here, yeah. yeah. The yellow, and that's gonna go on the car on this, this corner up here. Get this out of the way. This is going to go and sit in here like so, and this cleans up all the dirty tire wake out of the way, so actually improves downforce for the car because it cleans up the airflow going under the floor. It also yeah. improves airflow going into the radiators. The other neat thing about this is it actually 
doesn't really affect the balance of the um, okay. car. So it really is a win-win. Really, really neat upgrade in simulation. I've got to finish making these. Yeah. Cut them up, put them on the car, and we'll try them out. If they don't work, we take them off. Thanks a lot, yeah. Robin, and uh, good luck on the track. See you in the record soon. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks.